Hello again Nature Explorers. Now when we did the moth trap for this video we found lots of really exciting things so we've decided to put together a second bonus video to show you what we found in our moth trap. Enjoy! This is a moth that I found in the grass around the moth trap and it is one of my absolute top 10 favourite moths and that's because of its amazing camouflage. Now it looks just like a snapped off twig and it's called a buff tip um, and that's because it's this is its tail, its tail and its bottom here, um, and that is buff coloured. So buff is is another word for light brown, and this is just such a great example of of camouflage, and it's a really good reminder that you have to look so carefully around your trap because there will be moths hidden all over the place. This moth's called a gold spot and I hope you can see its wings kind of shimmering in the light because it really is beautiful. Um, this is a moth that you tend to find more in um, in wetland areas and that makes sense in my garden because we're surrounded by um, ditches and reens and, and wet grassland. So it's really nice to see a more specialist moth in the trap. This one here is a herald moth. Um, and he's quite an easy one to spot because of his wing shape. Um, and I love the names of moths. You can kind of tell that they've all been named by romantic Victorians. Um, so this is a herald. And I always think that he looks like he's wearing a cape, a very heraldic cape. Um, but yeah, he's a really easy one to spot. So here we are, this is the small elephant hawk moth. Bet you didn't know we had pink moths. Now I just think this is beautiful and one of the lovely things about going out in the morning with the moth trap is because the moths are colder and less active you can get such a good look at their feathered antennae, at their faces, how furry they are, and get a really good look at the detail. Now this is a, a grassland moth. Um, but you might see it foraging in the evening on things like honeysuckle um, and red valerian. So it is worth going out into the garden or maybe just going for a walk um, at dusk. This one here is a white ermine moth um, and we've got white ermines and buff ermines in the trap but the, the spots on the back of a white ermine are much more spread out, there's sort of less of a distinct pattern to them whereas the buff ermine, which hopefully I'll be able to show you before it flies off, has got a much more distinct line of spots going across its back. So here, sitting on my thumb is the buff ermine and you can see that the dots on their back are arranged more in a line across the back wings of the moth. So that's the difference between the buff and the white ermines. When you run a moth trap often you do find other things in your trap not just moths. Um, and this is something called a cockchafer. Now you might know them as a maybug or a doodlebug uh, because they're such a massive conspicuous beetle um, there are a lot of, of local names for them. Um, my granddad who was from Suffolk used to call them billy witches um, and if one of these flies past you you really can't miss it because they make the most amazing clattering sound as they fly around. Now these have got really cool life cycles they spend about three or four years in the soil as a grub so if you think back to our first invertebrate video um, 
where I dug up the beetle larvae. That's what these live as for four years. Um, and then they hatch out and they live as these adults for about, oh, <laughs> is it going? For about six weeks or so. Um, and that's when they breed and everything. And then the females lay their eggs down deep in the soil, about, I don't know, 10, 20 centimetres down in the soil. And then they live as grubs again for the next few years. But they are such amazing things. I just wanted to show you one in action. So this one will warm up in the sunshine and then fly off. <laughs>